All right. Good morning. I'm going to change that. I'll spotlight so everybody doesn't have to be on film here for everyone. Zoom put all these new little features. I have to go through them. I didn't realize they did that. That's all good. All right. So welcome to, what did I call this perspective? <laughs> City. Cityscapes, cityscapes. I mean, we're going to work on perspective and drawing too. So everything we're going to have each week, we're going to get progressively a little more challenging and we're going to work on the fundamentals of drawing first instead of jumping right into the painting. Because the, the last time I did cityscapes last year, we had to like draw it back and take our time. And there was just some simple lessons that we could have done on sketch paper first and made it a little easier for everyone. So that's what we're gonna do this time. Um, when I switch my camera, the only disadvantage for those of you at home is, A, you'll see my hand better, which is great. But for something like this, it'll look a little crooked. So listen, <laughs> listen to my explanations when we go, when we're talking about straight lines and such, I'm gonna look a little slanted so you can see my hand, but, We'll talk about things being straight and whatnot. So let me, I'll go ahead and switch camera. Make sure it's on video. Does this plug in? Are you on? There we go. I'm turning it on now. Okay. There we go. And that's the move. Oh, it's just kind of hard to see. So the big blank space is my paper. If you guys need to come around, feel free to just okay. watch your stuff with the all the legs <laughs> things sticking out. So paper. Let me keep it back down just a little bit. There we go. Okay. So Today is one point perspective. So I, I chose this picture. I went to Washington DC to see family. So I thought, well, I'll walk around the neighborhood. Um, my aunt lives at the end of this street. So I'll walk around the neighborhood and get some good buildings and good perspective. But what I liked about this one is, this is great for a couple of reasons. One, it goes uphill. So that actually kind of helps us with the simplicity of it. So we don't have to worry about trying to keep everything flat. So we already are going uphill. Everything kind of goes into one point. So we're going to do one point perspective today. Um, and if you Google how to do one point perspective, one of the tricks, and this is just to kind of get you look at, I didn't tell you to have this prepared. You certainly don't need to prepare this, but I'll just kind of show you quickly. Um, especially if you ever want to draw like a generic city. This is a helpful little hint. And there, it's all over if you want to Google another a full video on it. So I've got a thumbtack and a piece of string. And so from that one point perspective, you can get all of your angles in perfect alignment. And it'll come up and you can kind of just see where everything is going to go. And it all comes down to that one point in the perspective and it just kind of follows along. Now you've got your windows and you can see where it goes. So how that translates is like this. So I'm gonna take, of course, it's not very good if you want your one point perspective on your paper. Because now you got a hole in your yeah, paper, you right? <laughs> so if this is like a final drawing, you don't really want the hole in your paper. You don't want your focal point to be in the middle of the paper. Um, when we get further along and your focal point is the point ends off the paper mm -hmm. is when this works out best. So wow. when you have the city street coming into a corner and you'll have your thumbtack here and a thumbtack here, then you can get all of those angles coming in. But for today, and this is scrap paper, I can do it here. Oops, I don't want that side. I want this. 
So I know I have, so I'm looking at It's a little bit extra. And, you know, it's really much better for pencil sketches and drawings because, oops, because there's a lot of extra stuff that you draw that you'll be erasing. But whatever, but what is consistent is this. Your horizontal lines are always going to be straight unless the building itself is curved. So as we go, I'm just generically drawing these things, but we've got our windows. See, I'm already making them crooked. It's just a habit. You see those angles, mm -hmm. but now you know what size the windows are supposed to be. This is just another way I would typically, and I'll, this is what I'll do next, is grab my skewer and get my angles. So now you know what size your windows are supposed to be, where they're supposed to end. Um, what is really tricky for a lot of people, and myself included, is some of these angles are so sharp at the top, it seems unreal. When you look at this roof line, it doesn't seem, when you actually go to draw it, you're thinking of a roof line. You're thinking of something that's going straight across. And then when you actually put down your pen or pencil, it's almost going straight up. And it just seems mm -hmm. like it doesn't make much sense. And um, I used to try to freehand and they just look at a building and draw, oh my gosh, I would do angles the exact opposite way. My brain would com compute backwards, like this angle, I would have it going up or going, you know, this going up instead. And it just, um, so the string is a trick, not one that I use very often, but it is a trick. Let me move this to see so you can see or not. That angle is gonna be crazy, especially for today. Um, We'll work on this. All right, I'm going to swap out my piece of paper and do it the way I would normally do. But I did want to show you this. There are a lot of videos out there where people use it, and it just is like these uh, really cute little drawings of a generic cityscape. Um, but it is really useful for your photo reference to help you find your angles if you don't have a skewer. And if you don't, I have 24 you. Um, typically, and this is what I'm going to do next, I'll take my skewer and go through all of those angles with you guys. I'll just turn my paper over. So this piece of scrap paper is bigger than the drawing or than the um, actual photo reference, but that's okay. So what I want you to kind of focus on now is getting really familiar with our photo reference, with the angles before we transfer it to um, the sanded paper because the sanded paper can end up being quite a mess if we don't uh, have that kind of under control. So this time, just using the skewer, I'm going to quickly set my vanishing point, my end of the sidewalk, and I'm going to start from there. So that point I've decided that's how big I want it to be. I don't need to make it any, any larger. So I'm gonna start my angles from there. I'm gonna make my sidewalk. And remember to keep it flat. If you're working, since we're not working on a still life, it does make it a little bit easier. You're not like looking across the room and measuring. When we're measuring, we're flat to flat. So it's a little bit easier to transfer. 
Um, but just make sure you're not tilting anything. We've got one angle. And see, that's where, you know, you look at it and you go, my gosh, that looks so huge. That doesn't look like it matches, but that's reality. And that's where I have to use some of these tools to make sure I get it right. I trust my skewer more than I trust my brain in the beginning drawing sections, you know? Um, I'll make a couple of those lines here just for the sake of the drawing. Of course, you can't really see all of them. Okay, so then we're going to go up from there. Um, when we're doing still life, we talk a lot about measuring. You know, if we're talking about the relationship, how long the sidewalk is compared to how tall the buildings are and things like that. So that's what I'm going to do here still because we want to practice the drawing of it. So... I want to see how tall these buildings are supposed to be. If my sidewalk is this long, how tall do the buildings get down here? Um, typically, I got to be honest, I'd probably just go bloop, bloop, and say, okay, I want it to match that. But we're talking a little bit more about drawing right now. So we'll go ahead and do something a little more specific. So if I take my skewer, and the sidewalk measures to here. And I translate that up from the horizon line. I know the bush goes through it. It goes to about, about halfway. So there's that and halfway. Up. Oh, that's funny. My little sketchy line was correct. <laughs> that's always fun. Okay, so there's my little bush. And then from there, I'm going to do a generic line to represent all of these roof lines because they do kind of, they duck in, some have awnings, some go back, some have decorations, some have chimneys. I'm gonna simplify for the sake of the drawing. And this is what we'll be doing with the painting as well when we, when we set these lines in place. I'm gonna simplify. And I'll worry about notching in and coming out from that point. So if I look at that line up here, we've got those chimneys coming out. And then we'll, we, you know, we would go from there. Um, the next thing I want to look at is, again, the bottom of my skewer is touching basically that hole that I made with the thumbtack. So now this is basically, my paper corners aren't going to line up, so that can throw me off for a second here. It's going to line up with all of these little third story windows. It doesn't look right. Hold on. Oh, I see what I did. Hold on, hold on. I goofed it right there. So right there, I took that angle from the top mm -hmm. of the roof and I didn't put it on my little dot, which is what I was working from. Yeah, so. so that changes that. Mm -hmm. um, so that makes that a little more makes sense. So now let's do that again. There we go. So now that line makes sense. This is... I'm working in marker so you can see <laughs> instead of not being able to see my pencil. We'll do one more line for the second story. And then we look at the different items going in. So, We've got this little walkway that goes up. Because this is just the, the sketch, I am not necessarily 
doing every single thing. I just want to get my brain thinking about how I'm going to paint this and how I'm going to simplify it. What's it going to look like? How the lines are going to fall. So I'm just sketching in quickly at one of the porches here. And then another porch comes right out next to it. The fronts of the porches are where we're going to have the tricky lines. The sides are fine. The poles are fine. There's just those little straight up and down. And this guy is right up front here. And then everything gets respectively larger as it comes forward. Um, I didn't fully measure everything. I did not measure it mainly because again, this is a sketch, but this is also not a portrait. I'm not concerned with it being my aunt's street. If I was, if this was, you know, for someone to have a portrait of their street, I would be very careful about spacing everything and, um, getting every little detail correct. But for today, I just want to keep it simple. I want to just have a generic perspective of a little street of row houses going back in space. Where some of those windows end up. So if you haven't been drawing already, go ahead and do so. I'm going to keep sketching for a couple of minutes and then I'm going to pause the recording and then we'll get set up for the painting. So we'll get to the fun stuff quickly today. Does anybody have any questions? I know it was kind of a fast little rundown. Um, and see, oh, that's a good one. I started to do the little half moon there and I drew a half moon as a half, as that semicircle. It's not gonna be how it goes. So I'll be checking measurements a little bit more angles a little bit more. And how it really kind of goes long and in. It goes like that. I can see that coming. So as we get into when we did um the first cityscape that we all did online before was uh, a New York street. And it really, really didn't matter how things were going because it was a foggy day and all you saw was um, the buildings blurred because they were so tall. This is very compact and we see start to finish, we can actually see brick. Whereas those all of those buildings the further away it got, you really didn't have much detail. So today's got a lot more information. I'll kind of fill in a little bit with the pushes here. I'm looking at this going, I needed to add greens, dark greens to my teaching box. And I was like, no, I'm doing a street today. I don't need that. And here I'm looking now, I'm looking at all these bushes that are sitting here. That's all right. So there's the trees coming up. Damn, I feel rusty. <laughs> <laughs> that is okay. That's what this is all about. Jeez. All that drawing, it's always, you know, it's it's fun to challenge yourself to draw new things because yeah. I have a tendency, <laughs> like, I can, you know, whip out a marsh <laughs> in a hot second. Yeah. But now when you throw in architecture, it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> now I got to think. Now I got to interpret angles and... So I'm just kind of bulking up some of the lines here for the, again, the sake of my brain. Um, 
I normally would just jump right into painting and then regret that because now I've got to work out all these issues of what am I looking at? What do I really see? And, and this is one of those perfect times of what am I looking at? <laughs> what is that? Is that how is that window line up there? I know that each house has X amount of windows on the second floor and third floor, and they're all like the same. But as you know, you get further away, they get closer together and how to represent that. A lot of times our brains want to go window one, window two, window three, window four. We make them all the same size, but really they're not only getting smaller in height, they're getting smaller in width. So those are the things that we have to train ourselves to observe before we jump in and create a hot mess. Now, most of you know, I'm not a highly detailed painter. So trust me, things will get very impressionistic <laughs> the further down the line you get. You're not going to have, you know, this exact replica of all these places. But um, all right, I'm going to pause the recording for a minute. Um, I wanted to show one more thing because I got sidetracked. Um, but if you've a couple of the classes with the um, like the figures and things like that, just something to kind of help with. It helps with composition. It helps with cropping and changing things around. Um, but just this is it's a fold or like a paper pocket kind of a thing. And then I take a dry erase marker and it just kind of helps you see what you're doing a little bit. Um, and just to simplify, like if I really wanted to simplify some of the shapes, just to get your brain kind of going with, all right, what am I looking at? How can I see? When you're doing a landscape, this is more about locking in value. But for this one, it's just nice to kind of look at the angles. And as you're looking at them, literally tracing over them, just to train your brain to say, oh, what am I looking at? Those chimneys up top, they're a little deceiving. You know what they are, you know what they're supposed to look like in your head, but when you're looking at them from this angle, everything changes. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of want to, some of these basic information bits. So then when I look at it again, you know, what makes sense? Oh, we'll twist it that way a little bit because these lines look really crazy to me, you know, and to your, again, those top lines, especially. But I do keep this handy a lot for, um, if I'm trying to crop something out and play with things without, I'm not good at Photoshop. <laughs> so I don't, I don't make, I, I just do it manually. Um, and if it's not as simple as folding the paper and changing things around, I can kind of, mess with chunks of things mm -hmm. that way. All right. So now, again, for me, this is not a portrait of the street. This is a generic street that has row homes. Um, so I'm not counting houses. I am not counting windows, except for, you know, these, the first couple of buildings clearly have three windows across the front. Um, so I'm kind of giving myself a break, if you will, <laughs> A, for the sake of time. But, um, but the most important thing are the angles. I lost my skewer. Okay. So just like in my sketch, the first thing I want to set is 
that one point where everything goes to. We have, you know, in terms of composition, um, I really kind of like this composition because everything is leading your eyes. You know, I don't normally say my focal point is this, you know, I'm, I'm not a big proponent of, I have to have a focal point. What I like is to create a journey. If I can create the viewer to have just a little trip around the painting and then you kind of see things and go around things. This one has a very specific point and all of these wonderful, beautiful angles point to it. Um, in terms of, you almost have like the, what is it, the Nautilus shape? You can almost kind of see the little circular things mm -hmm. kind of happening there. Um, on the right side, you have two thirds to one third. So that's the golden mean. You don't have it on the left, but that's okay. You don't need it. It doesn't have to be dun, dun, dun. It can be one side, two thirds to one third. Um, those are the kind of things that I, if I think I like, a photograph or a scene, then I can kind of reverse engineer and figure out why is that pleasing to me, you know, to create the right composition from the beginning sometimes um, is a little daunting for me. So I just kind of look at if I like it, does it have the properties or can I push some of the properties to make it happen? So for this one, I want the where do I want my little sidewalk end here? Shell Silver Steam, where the sidewalk ends. Okay. Um, I want it about right there. So I'm just going to start from there. That's probably going to end up cutting things off because, again, I'm going on a smaller piece of paper anyway. So now I'm only concerned about angles, not as concerned about measurements. But angles mean a lot in this particular piece. Because of where I moved it, it probably is right. Because again, I, I think I'll probably. I started here. Some people ask, you know, where do you start? Why do you start there? Um, this was the simplest shape for me. This was the easiest piece of information to start from. So that's why I chose the sidewalk both times to start with, because it was a solid piece of information that didn't have all kinds of crazy things to deal with. It was just there. So that's why I start there. Um, I will place this little background building. Oh, see, now that I'm staring at the building, I see stuff. I'm trying to not see stuff back there. Um, I don't necessarily need to paint the stuff on the building. I'm not going to go crazy with the trees right now. This bottom group of trees kind of has its own little world here. This chunk of trees, all of them kind of blend together as one dark value. I'm going to represent them as one dark value. I'm not going to draw up into the sky because that's going to be a pain to paint my sky behind the trees if I draw the trees in the sky. So I'm literally just going to have a bunch of the dark value tree trunks down here for right now. I'm gonna place that big old shrubbery. And be really careful. I do wanna get quite a bit of information in there. And now I'm looking at it going, I don't know how much information I'm gonna get. So I'm gonna take a second and just kind of analyze what I'm doing over here. This is what happens. I think I get all like, oh, this is so simple. I'll do this, this, and this. And then I start going, I'm like, wait, now there's a problem, hold on. At least I'm catching a problem now before I really get going. If I look at that again, that shrubbery is much smaller in the photo. And now looking at the shrubbery, I'm looking at where this building comes up 
it's not right at the sidewalk. It sets back from the sidewalk and there's a nice little L in there. So I want to make sure that I don't bring that building in too close to the sidewalk. And there, and that imaginary line there. So now I am going to go ahead and sketch that generic line, that generic roof line. Um, and I will do it as lightly as I can. Um, actually, there's kind of now, if you look at it, there's almost two rows of roof lines. Because it's now part of the painting, I'm going to come down here. These two, these two right here, these first two, have a different, they're kind of forward mm -hmm. of the other ones. So I'm going to just do these two real quick, and then I'll take another one. And that kind of lines up with the shrubbery. And so that's a good thing too. Those lines look so wrong, you know, when you first put them down because they're just like, what are you yeah. doing, right? It doesn't make much sense, but it's correct. <laughs> And I will measure and recheck a lot. So do that. Don't worry about. At this point, it's only a line that can be moved and erased. This looks like some kind of an awning. So this is a little bit more drawing than I would normally do, um, for sure. And if you can't figure something out, kind of like with the cars, if you can't really make it out, you know, if, you, if I'm really analyzing this little chunk of roof line right here, something's going on in there but we got the tree kind of obscuring it we've got distance obscuring it i'm just going to gloss over it it's not going to be i'm not going to be able to recreate the details that are technically there anyway so then it becomes to switching your brain to value is it darker is it lighter how can i represent it and move on don't stress about it don't stress about trying to draw it too much i want to get in as many um, specific roof line angles as I can. Let's see how far I get. Once I get my sketch in place, I'm probably going to fold my paper to match what I've actually drawn. So I'm not confused and I'm not trying to fit in stuff that I didn't fit in here. Right now I'm about right here, which means I'm not gonna get all the way up. But now this line, oh, it does kind of change. So we'll go here. And again, I am not, this is all very, um, subtle and impressionistic. Um, I'm not worried about matching. It's not a portrait. So if it were, I would be concerned with how um, wide each house was. Um, now that I'm looking here too, these are two roofs that overlap. So you see one coming out and then it looks like it's a part of the chimney, but that's actually the roof of the house with the chimney. So just, okay. you know, don't stress about that kind of stuff because you can only fit so much on the paper. Okay, so I am, oh, that's kind of a bummer. <laughs> I miss a lot. Hold on. Well, all right, so actually, because I am kind of scrunching things in a little bit, I do kind of miss, I'm gonna use this 
Um, but I technically cut out a house or two. Sorry, people. <laughs> um, so, but I like all of these porches here. I don't want to lose the porches. So there's a house that's cut out. It's fine. I'm not going to worry about that too much. So now I've got all the roof lines that I'm going to get. So I'm going to work this way now with some of the shrubberies. Little, little coins. Put the little urns in there if you want. You can take them out later, <laughs> which I have a tendency to do. Like once I get going, like why did I include that? That was silly. Um. All right. So because I'm kind of doing some reconstruction, I'm gonna put. I'm going to take it. I'm going to place the this first big porch um, the vestibule, if you will. And once I, I need to figure out the height of the vestibule so that it makes sense to the buildings right now I have this big generic open space if I just start sketching which is what my brain said just draw it you're fine <laughs> I know I will have problems with that later so what I'm going to do is to find the correct height for all of these angles I'm going to again go back to my focal point and get an angle and when I get that angle I can place that top corner of it so this this particular piece and you know this very extreme perspective is all about the angles um so that's gonna run from my dot see i would never have made it that tall <laughs> so that's the corner i will fold my paper a little bit hold on because if i do that check that angle it kind of dips down a little bit not much it's almost a horizontal but that's this line right here so i am going to go ahead and fold my paper because i know where i cut off i know where i couldn't fit and that is right there Okay. I'm not worried about um all of this trim exactly just yet. So I'm drawing a little bit of the trim uh for spacing purposes. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I'll, I'll worry about how I'm going to represent the details a little bit later. I'm glad I didn't go too big today because this is going to be the setup of this one is much, much more than normal. Normally, we would have been like halfway through the painting by now. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> feels like it. <laughs> There's kind of one porch. Walk around and see. Good. Good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. I thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Normally, you know, it's fine. I, I, if I were doing it as an actual portrait, it's tempting for sure. Mm -hmm. You get, you get off on it. Though. Yeah, I mean, you don't 
but it's, it's not as so accurate. Not, yeah, yeah it's you have still, to double check. The yeah, device. yeah, but it, it's definitely a, a great little aid. Yeah, yeah. gets you going. So. I don't know. I was taking notes on what you were doing over there. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm glad you didn't know. Right. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to keep going with these angles of the porches, and then I'm going to kind of fit the windows in between, I guess. Um, oopsies, picked my own thing. Okay. So with something like this, with all these porches and stuff, and this is why I'm not going crazy on detail um, with like the trim and all of that you know the dental moldings and you know the all the different architectural styles that are represented here um i have to keep it as simple as possible at this stage because it's there's going to be a lot of lines and we lose a lot of lines if you think about any other landscape painting that we've done how many lines that we've drawn in that don't exist anymore once we start painting. So don't get hung up on too many details. Just get the structure in there, the placement of the porches and the windows. Um, and then we can worry about how much, you might not even get in nearly as much as you think you would. Um, with um, all the details anyway. So don't, if it gets too much, like I'm doing, I have too many corrections. I have to erase a little bit before I start painting. And there's one more and then the rest kind of blend into history there. Are you putting that railing in the front? Uh, this one? Yeah. No. No. No, it doesn't add anything for my mm -hmm. sake. I don't think it adds any benefit. Mm -hmm. um, as I get further down, you know, the closer to the, the midpoint here, I'm not even going to place windows because mm -hmm. They're all basically one value and it just looks like little lines. And that's pretty much how I will paint it is just little indications of light and dark. Um, it is certainly not worth losing sleep over. So now what I do need to do is I place the tops of the porches and vestibules, but I need to get some of the bottoms in there too. Um, that has its own little line almost. It's a little more generic, but where they end is just as important. Right now, mine are kind of floating, mainly because I know I have some shrubbery up here. Boy, that shrubbery is really big. Um, Well, it's kind of two. So once we get going, if any of you, I think maybe a couple of you were here when I did, we did um, a night scene, the, the, the umbrella, the person walking down the street with the umbrella. We did very blurred over indication of just you could kind of guess that it's a shrub you can kind of guess mm -hmm. that there's some light on it you can kind of guess that there might be a stairway there uh, that's what we're going to do so I'm not going to be drawing anything else in here I've got the solid elements the uh, all of the gardens <laughs> where all the shrubs are they're going to be so simplified but it's going to be obvious what it is. So the next thing to kind of look at is this house here has like a weird porch. So 
I have to look at when is it time to actually draw a window. I think I do have these buildings a little bit. I have the roof line a little bit bigger and the porches a little bit smaller. So So I lose, I'm gonna make that window is just gonna kind of go almost off the top there. You know, that's kind of one of those no-nos where you're not necessarily supposed to let things go off the edge, but today I'm going to let it go off the edge. So much molding and decorative bits and pieces. Um, again, this isn't a very big piece of paper. I'm not worried about. I'm going to give it's just going to be very impressionistic indications of, of details. Oh, I know what those there's like little shed dormers there. So I'm not worried about the windows that are coming off the top here. Those will not be. Hmm. The drawing of this is much more exhausting <laughs> than I had intended. Okay. All right, that's where I'm going to stop my line drawing. I'm going to pause the recording for a minute and let you guys get to where you're comfortable. Um, I'll give you another five or 10 minutes or so. It's right about 10 o'clock. So we have plenty of time. It feels like this took a lot longer than I thought it did. But we have plenty of time. All right, so now comes the fun part. Now comes color, <laughs> finally. <laughs> um, now, we have to think about what comes first. Um, there's lots of layers to this. But one thing, if a sky is in your painting, 99.9% .9 of the time, the sky has to come in first because everything will sit on top of it. So you always want to get your sky settled in so you can put stuff on top of it. Um, the time of day. So let's see. We drove down. We got there at like noon, like 1130. Everybody already aggravated me. So my son and I went to take a walk. Um, so it's just, you know, midday, but we're talking, you know, December. So midday, December, I don't even know. Honestly, I, I wouldn't even know which direction was north, south, east, or west. So um, I'm not worried about, you know, a huge gradation in the sky. Um, it is a little bit lighter back here, but it was also a little bit overcast. I'm going to be pretty generic about this one and just go with a pretty nice medium blue. Um, if I decide that I need to spice it up a little bit, I will, but this, oh, there's my skewer, it blended right in. All right, now I have to, are you doing an underpainting? No. no, so this one, you know, this one, I'm just gonna go directly okay. to paint. There's not gonna be a lot of blending. Um, I probably will smooth out the sky a little bit. Um, 
if this were a portrait, like I was doing it for someone, a commissioned portrait, I might take the pencil drawing and take rubbing alcohol with a very fine paintbrush and set it in place. Mm -hmm. So you have your whole underpainting kind of set in place um, a little bit more specifically, which you'll paint over it. You'll lose the, I mean, the lines won't be there in the painting, but it, it helps you a little bit better. Um, I've done that before uh, with pet portraits. And that's kind of nice when, you know, especially the faces and once you start notching in with the paint color, it gets a little crazy. So, but for this one, there's so much going on. I'm not worried about an underpainting, a wet underpainting. This is probably a little too dark. And I said, no, I'm not going to need a lot of blues. I needed to replenish my blues. And here I am looking at my blues. I'm going to leave it at that for right now. Um, so I'm going to be where all these trees are. I'm going to be light handed. I'm not going to really put a lot of that. I don't want to fill the tooth because there's a lot of tree branches that if I want them all in there, I want that tooth available for the uh, tree branches to grab. So I'm just going to use the side of my stick chunk in what I can. I'm gonna go right up to the edges of the buildings. This is almost like this point for the sky, it's like a paint by number. I'm just kind of, I have solid edges. Um, I have extra pipe insulation for you guys if you need it because we haven't talked about that yet but so I'm going to take some pipe insulation and just set it in place I don't want to pile on so this is kind of sets it into the tooth I don't have to worry about um I don't want it to keep piling to fill the tooth of the paper. I don't necessarily like the texture. Oh, you guys can't really see it. The way the light's mm -hmm. kind of blurring it all out. I don't really necessarily want to see the tooth of the paper on this one. Um, but I can take it and just kind of blend that down into the trees. So here, it's hard to see on the camera, but you can see that this, there's a little bit of tooth that's available. So when I go to put the trees in, I'll be fine. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of a darker blue up top only because it's very flat to me right there and I don't want it to be too flat. So maybe I'll do a little bit of turquoise in there because turquoise and blue together always make the sky much more lively. Prettier. We're going to stick with that. Okay. I kind of like that. That's a little more lively. Okay. I'm going to leave that be. I'm not going to blend that in too much. <laughs> There's a little. <laughs> and then I touch it anyway. Oh, you know. Who am I? Let's see. Okay. So now, you know, when I talk about what comes first, what comes next, what comes on top of one another, um, so many elements in this, so many different little things. Um, they're all kind of living together. You know, there's not, they're all kind of next to one another. Not many things go on top of one another, except for these tree branches. Um, and this tree that's sitting here that may or may not get a chance to live. But everything else, everything is kind of up next to one another. It's not like we have reflections on water where we need to get stuff underneath to get the stuff on top. They're all very solid, separate items. So in this scenario, I'm going with dark to light. I'm gonna start to fill in. I'm gonna look for all my dark um, and build out from there. So I am gonna use uh, my Terry Ludwig eggplant just to get those darkest darks. And when I put the little bits of green on top of it, it'll 
kind of shine through a little bit. You don't necessarily have anything as dark in your Rembrandt set. Um, so you can start with the black and then layer purples and blues on top and greens on top to kind of get the depth that you want. Because some of them, some of the darker colors end up being a little on the flatter side of the on the grayer side. Um, but this particular pastel is one of those well-loved, even if you don't buy any other sets from Harry, people will buy this one. Um, so on screen, it looks black, but it's eggplant. So I'm just gonna kind of find, I have something that looks like I kind of even know what to do. Do you have Terry Lovely? Yeah, I just got them. Oh, good. Like I don't, like there's a lot of dark. I'll tell you which one. That one or that one? This one? This one. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think you have extras. I think you have that's Double. gonna be a red violet, mm -hmm. and this is eggplant. So that has red in it because it's with your reds, mm -hmm. but this is the eggplant. Okay. And then and does that look black? No, no, no. How do you know they didn't have names? Oh, they might have names. They they just came with the box. Oops. Yeah, I think this, this I think it's this one. Wait, uh, hold on. We're playing with uh What's really an eggplant? Oh, that's a nice. I know. That's they a... were broken, some of them. I didn't do it. It's just, that's not cool. I know. That's it. No? No, that's like a almost a black. That's it. Yeah. So it is okay. the first, that one's the eggplant. And this one's a little bit darker. So thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, he has a couple of them that are really close, mm -hmm. but they um they might have a little, like I said, a little red to them or they'll end up looking a little brown. So I'm just, again, notching away. I don't wanna stay up on the tip. I wanna stay as, with as much of the stick as I can. Now, when we're in tight spaces, no, I'm not gonna get the whole side of the stick, but for right here, I'm doing what I call like a rock up, meaning like only I'm using the side, oh, hold on. I'm using the side, but I kind of just lift up. So hold on. So if that, if my finger's the paper, just kind of lift up. So half of the stick mm. is making a mark. Um, if I can use the whole stick, I use the whole stick. And the reason for that is I don't want to fight those marks later. If you have a hard line, you're gonna fight the marks later. They're gonna, they're not, they're just gonna stand out. If something is a little bit dark, you can just go a little bit lighter in touch. And then when you put the next color on top, it'll blend in. Not a whole lot of heavy, heavy darks. You know, we've got a couple of little roof lines that are pretty dark. It's got some weird awning. So you can see now that we're going, why we don't want too many lines, because we're going to start to lose stuff. You know, we're going to start to lose a little bit. I am using directional markings, so I kind of know what I was thinking a little bit. That's it for right now. So many elements in this one. I'm gonna do a little layering of blues and purples for the sidewalk. It'll kind of end up looking like sand later, but that's okay. I'm just blocking it in for right now. I can put the highlights on top of it, so I'm not quite worried about that. I'm not gonna blend for a really long time. Um, and the reason is I just wanna see how far I can get and how natural it can be. It can your paintings can be a lot more vibrant if you don't 
if you if you go in and paint and blend and paint and blend and paint and blend, you lose some of that just vibrancy. Like the little crystals are just kind of shoved and smushed into the paper and they, they become really dull looking. Mm -hmm. um, so to so keep your paintings a little more vibrant, try not to blend for a while. Sometimes it's still necessary. So I'm not saying never do it. I'm just saying be, uh, be gentle. <laughs> Um, we've kind of talked about dark to light. You also go, just like you go lean to fat and oils, you go hard to soft. Mm -hmm. So pastels are, I thought of that because I picked up a hard one. I picked up a new pastel, um, because it was the color that I wanted. That's really the only reason, but, um, pastels are made of three things, pigment, binder, and water, the more pigment, the softer and the more expensive. The more binder, the harder, the less expensive. So you can feel it as you switch brands. I have a bunch of brands in, in my box here, not just one. So, um, do they all use the same binder, all the different companies? I don't know. Somebody was posting an article about or their thoughts on the, the composition of the pastels that they were using. And then a bunch of people were jumping in to correct them. So I was like, well, you know, yeah. I don't know. Um, it's definitely not the same as the binder in regular chalk for school kids. Like the chalk on your uh, teacher's, you know, what you get for sidewalk chalk or what you get for the blackboard, it's not the same binder. That's actually chalk. That's why it's called chalk. There's not chalk right. in pastel. And there are some people who are very offended by that. And so oh. um, I, you know, it's easier to explain for me, it's easier to explain that it's not oil pastel, it's chalk pastel, but it's not chalk. All right, so this stick that I picked up is a red violet. Um, so it's, again, it's super dark. You can almost see the difference online. Um, this is where, you know, we get into our values, right? We're worried about dark versus light. So these are very similar in value. So I'm not gonna see a big um, difference from a distance, but it's gonna help me get some of those darker brick colors in and I can build off of it. I'm not worried if some of the lines kind of go out of where they're supposed to be because I'm gonna be tightening them up with other ones, colors up next to it later. This piece of pastel is a little on the beat up side, so it doesn't have a good, it doesn't really have a good sharp side to it like some of them do. And like I said, I did not quite count out windows. So I'm really being very, uh, like playful. Yeah, like I'm not worried about. Suggestive. Yeah, it's all in the trick. It's trickery, tricking. But while I'm doing that, I also don't want to lose my way. I don't want to lose my angles because I'm being playful. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm trying to follow some of those lines that I had set in place. See, like that one's a little, a little much. Like I, I took that up a little high. I should have looked at my, again, my sets before I, looking for brick colors. I don't really have brick colors out here, which is fine. Mm -hmm. No, nah, we'll make it work. I, I, I mean, I could always go into my studio if I really get desperate and I'll go in there. This is very, very red. You want more orange? Eh, I don't know. As I get to the top, yeah. as I get closer to the upper light, what have I been doing? My sticks are all out of whack here. Um, once I get a little closer, I can work in. But that's the, the whole thing. You know, a lot of times when I'm, 
teaching, I don't want to go run to my typical, my bigger set to say, oh, well, I have that color because not everybody Mm -hmm. has that. And you can make things work with what you have. And that's kind of the whole point of it. It's, you know, a luxury to have all the extra colors, right? So if you don't, you can blend, you can still make it work um, with just what you have. So this is the stage, this is the ugly phase. I'm not worried about it. It does not look like I want it to yet. It's gonna be a little jumbled and a little confused for a while as I keep adding in color. But I'm just placing some things. Again, I don't want um, real heavy markings just yet because I know I'm gonna have all that light right up next to it. So the light that's up at the top, you know, there's all of that white and off-white um, trim work. It's gonna be a little interesting, but um, I'll tighten things up as I push up next to it. And I don't want the tooth to be too full so that the lighter pigment will set properly. Um, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to work on some shrubbery for a minute because this is getting to me. <laughs> so I'm going to take a little mental break and work on some soft things for a hot minute. And then uh, I'll come back to that. So I'm just going to keep going. Um, feel free to paint. Feel free to continue to watch. It's your time. I'm looking at my greens if you're wondering what I'm doing, because that's what I always do is I stare at my greens for a really long time and go, that's not what I want. That's not what I want. So I'm going to be blending some, some greens in here. We've got lots of different types of shrubbery on this street. You've got evergreens, but then there's these fancy evergreens <laughs> that they have. Um, so you've got warm greens, cool greens, blue greens, Ever, like, there's all kinds of things happening. So I went a little on the gray side. I'm not indicating what type of bush anything is with anything other than just the color. I don't care if it's a arborvitae or if it's something else. That's literally all I know. It's not an arborvitae. I don't know what it is, but um, it doesn't have to be. I don't like that green at all. My little nubbin of a stick here. And again, I'm just kind of blocking it in. I'm not really worried about too much definition just yet some mulch down there. Yeah, some of those greens are a little bit bright. On camera, it's looking all pretty dark. Um, but I'm looking at them going, I think they're too bright. That's OK. So I'm just gently layering them. I'm not, I'm looking for the dark. I layered in that dark first. And then I'm just giving an indication of texture just by gently layering things on top of one another. Um, not worried about branches in this scenario. Not yet. Maybe not at all, but for right now, definitely not. could, and I think I will start to indicate where those trees are going to live. So when I'm doing the trees, the trunks are going to be the 
dirtiest part of the trunk is going to be this little sideways. That went too far. Little sideways marks. Now, I don't want to just draw lines. If I just draw a line, it's going to look like I just drew a line. So I'm going to do the roll technique because these are pretty small trees and they actually don't go off the page, um, which a lot of times if we have trees, we need to remember to make them go off the page and they don't, or, and if they don't, it looks kind of silly, but these don't go off the page. So you're kind of like a clunker. I'm just gonna worry about putting in some of the bigger branches. This is actually kind of a brown, just very dull and boring. Um, so just indicate some of the larger, I'll worry about the little guys later some of those little ones touch some of the roofs or at least you know in, a, in appearance in the layering part kind of touch some of the roofs plus i'm going to go you know as they get skinnier i'll use a different stick to make them appear skinnier i'll use different sticks as well for light and shadow right now they look really kind of icky <laughs> Very, very stiff and childlike, but again, quite the ugly phase that I'm in right now. I'm going to pause for a second, give my brain a break, let you guys paint for a little bit. If you haven't already been painting, maybe get some color down and let's see what time it is. Ooh, it's 1030. We have an hour left. A lot of time. Pretty, pretty good amount of time. All right, so we have our little test strip of brick colors. So we used browns and oranges and reds just to kind of play around to get the variation of brick. Now I'm going to take a little piece of pipe insulation and kind of set, kind of move things around a little bit. Um, just kind of staining where the brick is going to live. I don't want to go crazy. I just want a little bit of pigment down that I can add to and then I'll tighten it up. But I don't really want to blend blend. I just kind of want to set it in place. And then I can use a little bit of what's already on the piece of pipe insulation and kind of add it to other places um, that need a little bit of pigment. You can move it around. And again, this isn't filling the tooth. So, you know, when I get to it, adding light bits the light will still sit on top very nicely without worrying about not having the, the tooth for it. So it's starting to look like brick houses. So that's good. It's not quite quite as in the ugly phase as it was a few minutes ago. That happens a lot when I'm working on like floral paintings. <laughs> um, sometimes I, I feel like I'm making all these beautiful marks and then I, I stand back and it just looks like a hot mess. So I just kind of smooth it all over and did you pull it back? Bush too? That no, was that fine. was just with the sticks. Okay. Um, greens, for some reason, especially in the softer brands, the pigment that makes the greens spreads really far, huh? um, like really far. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if I'm working on a wave where the inside is green, I don't want to put too much down because then I have this pile of green that's moving. Away. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to start notching in some of the other harder elements here. So I'm gonna be using um, varieties of light blues for some of the 
the white because they're in shadow, so they have a lot of a lot of light blues in there. Um, there's some beigey colors in here, kind of floating around. I'll get those in there too. Uh, remember when you're doing your first layers of the the whites and the off whites, start with something a little bit darker so you could add the highlights on top. So um, it'll be a similar blue to what's in the sky for me is what I'm starting with. Because then when I pop in the lighter blue on the front, the lighter blue in the front will look white. I'm not totally worried about um, all the little detailed lines just yet. There are some shadows in there, but I just want to fill in the space. I'm going to use as much of the stick as I can to, again, stay away from uh, those hard lines. It is interesting, the further away you get, the shadowed whites become a little more golden-y. So it could be because maybe the sun is actually hitting a couple of places. I could go a little deeper blue on some of those too, which I will. So like I said, I'm not really worried about all the little teeny tiny lines just yet. I know they're there and I'll get to them. I will address them at some point, just not quite yet. And then the, ends, the windows themselves, actual glass is reflecting the sky. So, but in a little bit darker, Shade. And this, you know, you don't have to be too specific about it because, you know, like my windows here at home, they actually have a green tint on them, some kind of UV protection kind of a thing. So, you know, you don't have to match exactly. Um, so I'm just kind of placing some of the glass. If you can't see the glass all the way because there's so much trim, right? So I'm just kind of placing some of that. You know what? I'm going to pause for a second and refocus the camera. I just realized it looks quite blurry for you guys. So let me refocus that. I'm going to pause. All right. So the curves, they're all a little bit different. They all have a little bit of different information. Um, but one thing is consistent is it goes up and then it goes over. So it's more like an L. However, the L is weirdly angled. So that is what we're going to focus on for a second. Um, some of them are rounded. Like this one's a little rounded and this one's a little squared off. Um, but this is one of those tricky things that can kind of get you. So 
I'm looking at colors first because I see all kinds of, you know, very concretey, mossy covered, weird colored things in there. And then we have sunlight um, on mossy covered concrete. But I'm not going to think about the fact that it's mossy colored concrete. <laughs> I'm just going to try to, eh, sorry, I'm just going to try to, again, gently notch in and have just some information peeking in there. And it doesn't have to be exact. So this is a nice, thick, neutral gray green, I'm adding a little bit to the sidewalk too, just right on top of some of that blue and purple, calm it down a little bit. And that also helps me because it'll match a little bit to what I'm doing. Um, so there's definitely that little bit of shadowed line, that hard line where the sidewalk stops against their little curves. So I'm going to take, just looking in my box, uh, the thing that has the best edge right now is an actual black new pastel, which I normally wouldn't use, but for right now, it's the best option I have. All of my eggplants and dark colors have so many rounded edges. I don't want to mess with that. So I'm going to take that edge put it down. Okay, is this not doing anything? Oh, gosh, I hate this one. <laughs> this one has like a weird, it's, I don't, I don't know if there's something wrong with it, but it's like plastic on the outside and I can't get it to do what I need it to do. Let's see if this one's any better. Yes, this one's fine. So I'm not drawing a line. I'm taking that hard edge, that sharp edge, setting it down and pulling straight up. It's a little darker than it needs to be, but that's okay for right now. Um, because if I draw a straight line going up, it's going to be hard to see that the curb goes up. It's not just a line. So this side doesn't have the curb going up, but I want to indicate a little bit of a line there. So now when I come in, so let me put it on the blank part of the paper over here. So it's, you get that angle. So I set the angle and then I just pull up. Mm -hmm. And now you've got the front of the curb and now we'll go to the side. That's not a good example, hold on. <laughs> that did not look right. I want to indicate that L. So it comes out and then it drops, right? Out and then drop. So mm -hmm. it's such a small piece. So I want to So that first one I took, set it down, pulled up. Now I took the other one and pulled horizontal to indicate the top of it. It's gonna take a little extra work. This isn't quite as smooth as I had envisioned. <laughs> that seems to be the theme of the day. I have to somehow trick myself into never thinking that something is simple, right? All these, I'm looking at this photo, you know, when I was looking for what I wanted to do. And as I was taking the photos of this, and I thought to myself, oh, this is perfect because X, Y, and Z, and this makes it, this makes all makes it make sense. And it's simple. It's just quick angles going up and down and up and down. And now that I'm doing it, well, you should never have had those thoughts of simplicity because it is not simple. All the things that you see aren't quite going. Mm 
I'm gonna put my brown in there. There we go. So, and that's always one of those things too, is you know that the object itself is all the same color, but because of the way the light hits it, it's not the same color. Is that a new pastel? Yeah, this okay. one is a new pastel, yeah. Okay. And then maybe. All right, before I stare at sticks, I'm gonna come back and refocus myself on value, what I have down and how I'm going to. So the value, this is actually lighter in the front and darker on the top. And I have that opposite. So that's why it's staring at me in the face, mocking me. Hold on. Um, let's see, this is a navy. And a lot of times in these situations, you end up making the curve bigger than what it needs to be because you're trying to get it just so. All right. Here is what I'm gonna do. I'm kind of hyper-focusing right now and I gotta get myself out of it. You know, my brain is working hard when I'm quiet. <laughs> Interesting. I don't know if I can indicate that. Okay. That's like really hard. Sometimes it's hard to see the end of your, you think you're marking and then you're marking the wrong spot is what I just did. Mm -hmm. That's what I have to do the mulch in there. The mulch. I'm gonna throw a little bit of brown up under here. And there's some lovely burnt. Come right up to it. So now. That's getting better. I'm going to leave, there's like a little like half round brick piece that goes up from the mulch and from this. I'm going to ignore that for right now. Okay, so. So as I go, I'm really hyper focusing on this, so I got to move on. So I'm a little happier with up and over, up and over for the concrete curve and then that bricky kind of curve. Um, and the photographs are not very prominent. Here, they're not very prominent. They're not quite as detailed as they probably should be, but I'm going to let that be for right now because as, no as 
things normally go when we paint, if I hyper-focus on that, it's gonna all look different. The more I finish everything else, each little individual component looks a little bit different. So I'm happy enough that I'm gonna move on and then I'll come back to it and I'll readdress it. Now I have a ton of pastels in my hand because I was panicking and... So I don't want to hurry too much because I know that we're getting closer to the end here, but I'm going to just try and get as much information as I can. The concept of, you know, filling in some of these spaces now and getting some of that texture. I'm going to try to achieve some of this texture by um, simply letting the stick drag across what's already there. So because a lot of this, we've been very light handed, we should have enough tooth um, that it can create a texture. So I'm gonna add a little bit of um, the beigey yellowy trim in here so that we can get to the point where I show you with what the pencil will do for you. Um, we have a little bit of time. So let me get something beigey. All right, I've got to find a better place for my camera legs. Tripod legs, I keep kicking it. So that actually has a really dark. So this is an actual black. I am using that black new pastel for a second because this little rooftop here has a little bit of black in it. So I just want to indicate that. And then the front of it has a lovely blue reflection, but it's a deep blue because it's on top of black. So then just put that little notch in there and then that makes it look shiny. That is such a lovely detail that is on a painting that is so nowhere near time for the detail. So that's the other thing we have to think about is we go dark to light, we go, hard to soft, and we save our details for the end. So you don't have to paint around details. So the color that I ended up using is a little bit more beigey than yellowy that I wanted it to be. So I have to think about that. Boy, for an eight by 10, this is sure got a lot going on. All right, let me look at, let me brighten it up a little bit. A little more so beigey. So when we're talking about directional marks, 
it definitely holds true. We had it down here. We went up and then over for the L shape of the curve. Well, now we have the flat part of the building and then the little overhang comes out. So that's a different kind of L. It's straight and then you look at the angle of the dental molding and it comes out like that. So that's a whole other thing to watch out for trying to look at. It's like a not pretty color. Hold on. The screen for a second. I want the contrast. It's green. Eh, yeah, we'll deal with it for right now. And then that one has more of a blue. So I'm using the corners of my stick to make a little bit of a harder line. If you don't have a rectangular shaped pastel, don't worry about it. You can still just kind of gingerly roll on the edge, on the ends of it and get there. So things like this, yeah, I'm, I'm up on the end because I have this big fat round stick and I wanna just start to indicate the trim, the window trim. I'm still, you know, we're still kind of in that coloring phase almost, just filling in the, the page, filling in the basics, long way away from full detail. So in what's happening on this piece, what I'm looking at is light and dark, like it's light and dark, light and dark. That's all I'm focusing on right now is the stick I have in my hand, where it's not light enough, where all can I put that before I move on? Ooh, that's nice and bright. So there's a couple of pieces that are super bright. And I can pop it as I go. But I needed that creamier, beigeier color right underneath it. So up in here. This is where it also gets a little tricky with all these angles because again, you set your pastel down and you just still hope that it's in the right spot <laughs> because sometimes the angles might not be quite right. All right, I'm gonna get, what time is it? I'm probably pretty close. All right, it's 11.15. Um, what say you all for finishing this? On your own, together, next week? Does anybody have an opinion? Burn it, whatever. Like, what are we, what are we thinking here? <laughs> yeah. mm. because I have a lot of work to do. So, I mean, I'll be honest, there's there's a lot that needs to be done on this. So if you wanna do it together, we will probably spend a good hour working on it together if we work on it together. Um, <clears throat> next week's lesson is gonna have, it might be, I'll pick something that's not so close up so that there's not as much detail to worry about. Um, but it's going to have a little bit more complexity to it. We're going to have 
you know, multiple points of perspective to deal with in terms of it'll be more about the, again, with the drawing and then how we represent that in the painting. I'm going to stop the recording here and we can chat for a minute because we are coming to the end and we can talk about any questions or anything. I'm going to switch my camera. All right. And I'm going to move my camera since it's been in the way the whole time. I'm gonna take the spotlight off of me. I'm gonna go ahead and stop recording at this point. I don't have any much, anything else to really show today. Um, but just to definitely remember, if you're gonna keep working on your own um, and you wanna put some of those details, you can use your pencil, so. I'm for waiting if anybody else wants to wait and just put it aside for next week. Okay. <laughs> Oh, let me spotlight too. All right, so we're continuing on with the first week's lesson of cityscapes. <clears throat> and what I had asked everybody to do was to just double check your lines. And I was just doing that before we started because by the end of class, I noticed it looked like my lines were getting wonky. And I was right, they were getting wonky. Um, the roof line was fine. It was the window line. I got a little big. So it's kind of pinkish here. I took my white um, charcoal pencil and just kind of made it a bigger line that basically runs through. I know they. what happened was, is I can see between the two buildings here that one ledge is a little bit down and this ledge is a little bit up so when i'm trying when i was trying to paint that i lost my angle because i got a little too crazy so i've got this big old line i just took my skewer and lined it all up so i'll kind of go from there um that was really the only thing that got out of hand for me on that one um so Hopefully you've checked your lines and we can go from there, All right? Um, I'm so far behind this morning, I didn't even have my pastel box open. So <laughs> doing that now. <coughs> okay. I think I'm gonna grab a harder stick just for the first couple of markings here with this window line, um, just to kind of reinforce what's happening here. Oh, I know what else I wanna check. So <clears throat> now looking at, the porch roofs. Mm -hmm. I need to make sure those are going down in this in the right. They pretty much they are. I don't have those those top dark line of it just yet. So when I do the darker lines up here. I'm gonna just, I'm kind of carving in with my skewer that that's the top of that one and that's the top of that one. So they went a little high down there so I can correct that. Okay, I need to throw this pastel away and I'm gonna do that right now. Whatever that black one was, it's. You, I can't use it at all. It's some weird dark thing. 
Well, this is just going to be a dark blue for a second. So that's going to mark the tops of those, and I'll put something else in there soon. This is where those little angles get so tricky. So I'm putting in the fronts, and again, I'm also using blue, so that's weird looking to me as well. But um, it's it's really it catches your eye and makes you feel like it's all wrong. So that's a little bit of a struggle with your brain. So let me get some of that light off of there. right up to the tops of those. So I've just kind of shrunk those down a little bit. That's already making that look a little bit better. Straighten up some of that. Actually, that should probably keep coming down just a little bit too. just it's so these angles it's so funny my brain is really fighting me on it like it really wants those angles to go straight or at least not so harsh that is what they are. So again, I'm still just using one, it's an off white um, new pastel. I will expand into other colors soon. I'm just trying to establish some of that trim work on the windows. These angles again that I kind of got lost with making all those notches. I think these front ones are all pretty good. I'm looking at this trim on the second house in that kind of started to throw me off. Um, I'm just going to push in with some brick color. Because it goes up just a touch. So I need to keep that angle sharp just a little bit and then down on that side again doesn't have to be exact just trying to keep things a little bit straight uh, Oh, uh, okay. There is a, 
a circular decoration at some point. I'm not worried about that. I don't have enough space to really do that. I'm gonna go in my studio and grab a, um, a regular charcoal pencil. Um, I normally don't do that, but I just kind of feel like if I wanna get a couple of things in there, I, that's gonna be my best bet. So I'm gonna grab a charcoal pencil um, and look for maybe a little piece of black new pastel to put back in my box as well. So if you have a black pastel pencil or charcoal pencil or a new pastel, it'll probably come in handy with some of the, not quite detail, but at least, you know, the hint of a detail. Okay. It is harder than I Well, I'm out of black new pastel, which seems really weird, um, but I have my charcoal pencil. I'll have to deal with that later, I guess. Um, so this will be a little bit better to get. Some of that detail just kind of hints, some of those lines. Um, so the, con the compressed black charcoal pencil, um, it marks pretty well on top of everything, on top of hard pastel and soft. Um, oh, that's the other thing. I don't have, I kind of got a little crazy with my alignment here. So my windows aren't necessarily in the exact spot that they should be. So I'm kind of putting them. Just giving some hints as to what's going on. Um, so yeah, I do. I do like. I just recently started to use the black compressed charcoal pencil in certain spots on pastel paintings. It's a nice little helper. Oh, that's what I was doing. All right, so. <laughs> will actually be quite excited to get to the cityscape. <laughs> so I'm just kind of, you know, like I said, sometimes you just kind of go with what the painting tells you to do. And I'm just kind of going with a little sketchy feeling right now with the with the pencil. I do need to actually put some windows back in there, um, some blue on the windows. Which I need to grab. I filled it in because I wasn't, it was a little, all this compact nonsense got me not clearly thinking so 
Let me grab a paintbrush because what I'm going to do next is right here, these windows, as I was pushing the, um, the ledge up or down, I was using a brick color to do it. But a couple of spots, I need to put a window in there. All right, so I've grabbed a stiff bristled paintbrush and I'm just gonna carve away a little bit of tooth right here. It'll still be pretty dark, but once the tooth is clear, I can use that. to get the blue. There. I can also decide if things are crooked at all. I think last week, so this week as I was setting up, I went ahead and set up last night. Um, just to try and get some more information. I think last week, like right now I'm directly in front of the painting. And last week I was kind of leaning it off to the side to make sure um, I wasn't in front of the camera. And I think that really kind of affected me a little too much. Landscapes I can paint from the side, right? <laughs> That's not a big deal. But this kind of structure, I think I messed myself up with uh, a little bit of an angle. All right. I'm just kind of staring at it for a second to make sure that I didn't do anything too hastily and make the wrong kind of marks. Um, <laughs> need to keep the skewer in my hand <laughs> so I don't forget to use it. Back and forth, back and forth. So the other thing with all of this trim it's so big and bulky that the corners don't quite meet up in all the same spots because you have different levels of trim. So some of the trim meets up here, some of it meets down here. You would have that multifaceted, very gorgeous decoration. Then as I go down, the corner shifts a little in. So you can start to see, again, this is all just the charcoal pencil, um, but it's starting to come to something to, other than just blotches of color. Um, again, not going to go too crazy on all these details, but a couple of hints of light and shadow are always a good thing. I doubt I'm going to really um, focus on the dental molding that's up here. Trying to get simple angles is hard enough, but now to add a square at an angle that's coming down and, you know, I don't think I have the patience for it, especially on something so small.
Okay. Let's try this again. <laughs> Oops. I find myself, I keep looking at the bushes and stuff because I don't feel like dealing with the buildings right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to do the buildings. Mm -hmm. You can't make me. Well, okay. Let me give a little hint of the sashes. Just using the white charcoal. I definitely have a mental block on this painting and I don't, I can't really seem to identify what it is, but there's a deep urge to just not finish it, but I'm going to, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what we do. Just not finish it if it wasn't this. If, if I wasn't teaching with this, yeah, I would have washed it off. Abandoned. Yeah. It's just, it's not, I'm not getting a feeling that I want from, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. definitely happens from time to time. I just, uh... <clears throat> it's like, okay, it's not good. <laughs> But even still, you know, even after finishing it, if I still don't like it, I'll wash it off. I'm not, I've learned- So you just wash it off with water? Yeah, um, depending on how big it is, I either go out back with the hose or I go to the really? kitchen. Yeah, or I go and to the, the kitchen. Paper doesn't buckle. No, so if it's um, attached to, mm -hmm. you know, if you have it mounted, it's not going to oh, right. unattach. Um, it stays. Um, I just try not to get the foam cork too wet. If I've, if I've already got it mounted, I try to stay as gingerly spraying as I can. And then um, for the ones that aren't mounted, mm -hmm. there will be like a little bit of curling as it dries. Yeah. Um, but you can just, you know, if it's too much, I'll sit it under a book mm -hmm. for a couple of days and then it's fine. So never a waste of paper. Yeah, it's too expensive. Yeah, it is too expensive. And I'm happy to just wash it off. Now, if I've used a paper more than once or twice, I'm like, all right, the paper's cursed. So oh, yeah, <laughs> like, you use the paper away. Oh, yeah. Forget it. Yeah, it's the paper. Nothing to do with what I'm working on mm -hmm. or my skill level. So as I'm getting closer to the focal point, I'm just really not worried about if they're just turning into little lines again. Because again, this is only eight by 10 yeah, feet. feet yeah. yeah, it's really not lending itself. You know, I'm not sitting down to draw, mm -hmm. just trying to give a nice impression. I wanna make a good impression. Um, I'm using this kind of orangey color throughout. I probably shouldn't, but I just, it is a little bright for what it is. Um, or what it's representing, but that's okay because I can tone it down a little bit. If it's on the underneath, 
and then I can tone it down a little bit. I can represent some sunlight or some lighter brick. Mm -hmm. Get my skewer back. I'm looking at the this little mess of a multifaceted roof line. Hmm. So I'm really kind of using the pastel or the charcoal pencil to kind of blur a bunch of things over. I don't want it to get too dark though, so I have to be careful with that. Yeah. I'm tighten up the sky just a touch. So I did make that decision that I wasn't concerned so much with the way certain bits were lining up um, and the way these two roof lines were overlapping and I wasn't gonna worry about those uh, dormers up there. So I'm kind of simplifying that overall line. Mm -hmm. And I kind of like the way that's looking, even though, you know, I did take away some of those architectural details, but I'm a little happier with the way the roof line looks now. It's a little tighter. That was a darker blue, so kind of full. Oh, that one's dark too. Oh, darn it. I blend a touch into that sky because I've already got tree branches, <laughs> so I can't really make a nice transition through the tree. I don't even know what I'm looking at. I don't even know what I'm looking at. What that building? One, two. You're doing great. All right. So right now, the next 
bit of mess that keeps that I keep seeing is the fronts of the houses. Um, I'm still not quite worried about the windows just yet. I will get there, but I'm not quite there yet. Um, although I can, some of these have this lovely kind of cream color. I'm, not, I'm like crooked today. I keep, today is not the day to make crooked lines. So we got some sunlight up in its way on the front. Some of these walkways and porches. I'm looking at different colors because there's some like I don't want the the reflection of the sun to be flat and that brighter color was a little flat. So I'm gonna add pinks and touch pinks and oranges, and then I can put that color back on top and it'll have a little more glow to it. Did you scrape it out first or no? Just went right over the no, I didn't. Yeah, tooth. Tooth. No. yeah, I just went right over the top. I had enough tooth and I did kind of want them to blend together. So mm -hmm. um, they kind of needed it all to stay. Did the orange first? Like, I, well, I accidentally did the light first and it was too light. So I went over the top of it with a, like a creamsicle kind of orange. Now I'm going to reinforce some of those blue shadows that are up and around. Ooh, they're very turquoisey. I don't know if that was my phone or if that is a printer. The value is a little light though. Now turquoise, like it, when you get darker, sometimes it gets either too green or too um, gray mm -hmm. not so fun Almost like water the concrete because of the blues and turquoises and everything else. It's kind of little wall here. I think I've made this little wall a little bit bigger than it needs to be. So I'll be cutting into that a little bit. Some shrubs. Let's step back for a second. So that is that building back there. I'm trying not to be too detailed with that building. Um, yeah, I don't want it to be 
and I can keep it a little bit blurry and a little bit hinted of stuff, but I don't really think it's staying out. Okay. You have the dog that's put off for that. <laughs> One thing too with your black charcoal pencil, just you know, try not to get carried away with it because it will muddy up what's there. You know, it's helpful and it it makes it a nice mark, but it can certainly muddy up if you're not careful. If you want to give a little hint of the, um, the way the sidewalk has some, you know, the breaks and the squares and such, just a little hint of it. So it doesn't look like I just painted a river going down the side, you know, <laughs> going down the in front of the house. Little we'll work on some shrubbery for a minute. I'm just picking out at this point. I, mean, I haven't really started working on the shrubbery like I wanted, but just kind of picking out some of the things that need to be either softened or connected, or you know, just the slight little yeah. You know, some of the lines kind of stand out a little too much. Some of them not enough, so that's what I'm kind of looking at right now. And I'm using what's in my hand right now as a, a, a Rembrandt, but it's a, a really light gray. Right now I've got this big old box just kind of sitting up here at these windows. Let's see. 
Let's kind of go around and see what stands out as mm. right or wrong or not enough. There's still a lot of blurred things happening, which is probably like fine, that. but I'm not, but there are some things that aren't connecting, like, you know, so I just want to make sure that they kind of connect a little bit better. Like, I think that's going really well. I'm, yeah. They're too, they're too, they're too even. I know. I so I kind of I did the same thing. So I tucked in blues and turquoises right. up around it. So you yeah. don't necessarily have to remove. You can just kind of go up with go them. over. Yeah. It. Let it blend its way a little more okay. naturally. All right. I did add a couple of greens to my box, but when I was looking at my greens, I was like, well, I don't. Every time I picked one up, I'm like, oh, well, I already have something that's really similar to that. And then I would pick another one up and be like, oh, I kind of have that too. So I don't really know how much I helped myself, but <laughs> I did add them. I said I would. So green is one of those pigments that just yeah it goes it hangs on and you it leaves a lot and there must it's whatever the properties of the green is it's like it just leaves so much pigment down so I'm just gently going over what I have letting things kind of mix together. The further the way I get, the less I have to be so specific about what it is. It's just a hint of green. We love all kinds of shimmery. <laughs> ground cover, a lot of ground cover. Which makes sense because it's just such small spaces, you know.
Just let me know if you need me. I'm just kind of cruising along. But we're at very similar stages, so it's like I have to stand back more than I'm doing. But. Uh -huh. So I'm pushing shadow shapes back into the greens that I've just put down. Using directional markings on that, some of that ground cover, just to let the viewer know that it's coming in. I want to turn that in. Yeah. I'll leave that laid out for a little bit. All right, so the tree branches in the photograph are all pretty dark, which is nice. Um, and because I was close enough to the trees, um it's okay for them to be dark so if we had those branchy trees and they were really far in the distance I would start throwing in like a lot of lighter colors mm -hmm. um like lighter grays and purples but I can keep it pretty dark the only thing is you know when you see the little tiny branches they almost look a little bit blue because of the reflection in the sky with them so I can I can still go a little bit lighter. I don't have to make those little ones blue, but um, mm. as I go to extend those branches, I'm going to use probably skinnier one of those gray, dark gray Rembrandts that I have in my box to get it going. So I have the really dark, heavier tree trunk branches, and then I'll just start to kind of continue from there. I'm leaving this bit B for right now. I'm not necessarily happy with these little bits of building, but I might be covering it with tree. <laughs> so, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, I do kind of want to get a little bit though, some shadow in here. I think right now I have a lot of contrast and not a lot of continuity. Oh. Dark gray and just kind of mm -hmm. while I love rolling tree branches it does get really tedious <laughs> when it's the winter <laughs> it's not just doing it a little hint here and there
I am trying to pay a little bit of attention to the pattern because sometimes some, you know, the tree branches grow in a specific way. So I'm just looking to see if there's any specific things that I need to make sure I account for. So you're doing gray with that? Yeah, I'm just kind of pulling. It's a brown tree and I have a deep, deep brown on it. So mm -hmm. I'm just taking this darker gray and pulling some of that brown from the other marks. And then they lighten up as they get further on. And then I can go back in with another dark color. But I will certainly be using multiple colors in multiple directions, filling that space. I don't think I'm going to put the tree in. We talked about that in the very beginning, putting the tree in that's in front of the houses. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to leave that one out. Um, I think it's going to give me more grief than it's worth. But same concept. If you wanted to do it, I would carve out the path with um, a stiff bristled paintbrush and then do the same techniques as we're doing over here. A little bit of heavy marking. A lot of trunk heavy tree trunks in the middle here because those trees are so tightly lined together. So then at the point of view of the walker, they all kind of bunch up into one little thing. Switch colors here. Yeah. You're doing good. Mm -hmm. We're not, you're not doing this right now. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I don't like taking names. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely like certain aspects of the painting and I'm as I'm looking at it now I'm looking at it through the thought process of if I do it again um yeah I'm not necessarily looking at it to fix it in this particular piece I think I would make it a little bigger and kind of give myself some more room that mm -hmm. way um this one. You're gonna give it to your aunt? Um, not this one, no. I, I don't like it enough to give it away. And since it is her street, yeah, <laughs> she'd be like, that's not right. Uh, <laughs> I'll be like, shut up. <laughs> no, but yeah, it's 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 not correct enough in this form, mm -hmm. even with the even with the idea of um keeping loose impressionistic marks, it's still not quite right enough. Can't really see it on camera, but I was making little hints of grout marks because I don't want to actually do grout, but just a little hint of it be a good thing. Oh, and the brick. And yeah, just because I had this. So I didn't quite, like I was saying yeah. before, I didn't quite line things up right. So to put this there's right. a divider there. I it does it wouldn't work for me. So now I've got this big space of brick that could use a little something mm -hmm. in the, in the thing. All right, I'm going to keep going on tree branches for a minute. Pick a different color. 
Um, if you don't have like purples and such, you can certainly go into like a navy blue, like a really deep blue in places or stick with the browns. That's totally fine too. Might be a little too purple. <laughs> I'll go back to the browns. I think this might be the one that I started with. Yeah. So this brown is super soft and it doesn't leave the pretty lines that I want. So I'm not going to continue with that one. <laughs> Maybe I'll try a couple of navy ones. might be good too for those little outer branches that are making that kind of blue haze mm. that could nice that could work nicely So I think that, you know, the trick with these types of, you know, winter trees where you see every single little branch, one of the parts of it is to not actually make every single little branch um, to make enough, but not overdo it, you know, because it can become just a jumbled hot mess if you try to completely do every single thing you see. And... Is that a light blue or I mean, a, a, a dark a navy? Yeah, it's like a navy, but it's it's got a little bit of ultramarine kind of feel to it. Because mm -hmm. it can become a jumbled mess really quickly. And if it's, you know, you can always kind of just kind of and drag over it just a little bit like I did in the middle there I just mm -hmm. kind of drag it just a little bit because <clears throat> that's what you you see you see it kind of bunched together and maybe not not see every individual branch right you drag it with the edge of it yeah just you can see the side there you go so I'm going to step back and see what else can be tweaked a little bit? So what stands out for me right now is some of that trim. There's such a contrast between the dark and the light, but as you go into the distance, the contrast you, you kind of lose a little bit of it. So I have to tone down some of that contrast. Yeah, I see so many things that uh, aren't quite right. Yeah, it's like a red brown. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it could be. Absolutely.
So uh, that all that color, all that red brick is just kind of boring. Oh, <laughs> so I'm looking for there's kind of like a maybe it's a greenish kind of maybe it's a coppery patina kind of a thing happening. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna try and hint a couple little bits of something different down the way there. Kind of break things up a little bit. Definitely more blue down there. But not like they're not, I mean, it's all subdued because it's um, historical, all historical homes. You can't really do much to it. I'm a little crooked on things. There's like a gray blue that I'm just kind of adding in a few spots. Kind of liking it a little bit. Of course, I might change my mind when I turn around and I walk away. I keep making the most crooked lines like I start off fine and then it just <laughs> goes in its own way I'm going with the concept of a couple little vibrant spots. We'll do it a little bit of good. Making sure that my little highlights on the sidewalk match going up into the curves there too. So that's kind of, you know, what I'm doing now. It's those little contrasting marks um, playing off of one another to make the structure. So they say my brain's not on to it again. <laughs> trying to articulate what I'm thinking here. Um, now that I am starting to sharpen up some of the pops of light, I can come back in with dark again and just re-emphasize some of the dark that might have gotten lost in the neutral buildings of everything. Um, 
If I can push a little bit of dark, I will. I'm using eggplant right now, which is always a little tricky on top of pale colors, but turns it a little too purple sometimes. Reemphasize some of those nice blue shadows, blue windows, as things have gotten a little muddy in places. I'll pretend that I can see some of them down the way. I'm starting to like it better, but <laughs> it might not get washed off now. I don't know. We'll see. I'm getting there. Very nice. Okay, the only thing I want you to look at, Marlon, which one? <laughs> I feel like the top windows are leaning to the right. Like so the, that vertical, these yeah, are vertical. Yeah, yeah, I feel like yeah, yeah, they're they're right. so it's my vertical line or my yeah, line? your yeah. vertical line. Yeah, they are leaning. So, so how's this one? Yeah. So you can I would honestly take like a pencil and straighten them out, and then you can decide because then you can just kind of take both color schemes and you can push the, yeah, the yeah. red one way and the blue the other way. So yeah. I'll get it. Are they all leaning? Most of them. The, the top building row, is probably right. Well, the building probably gets easier to hide, but the top row of windows is definitely leaning on the whole. Yeah. The rest of it, it doesn't look as. Mm. <laughs> but I, I had to fix all of mine. In the beginning, mm -hmm. to all right, I think the, the, the second one, too. Yeah, some of them absolutely could be. So, sometimes I'm trying to look at like there are mm -hmm. lighter colors, like lighter orangey colors in the front down here that I could add as well as that blue. But here's always the problem. If the stick isn't strong enough, like depending on the brand really is what I'm trying to say. Some of the brands, they don't mark well on top of mm -hmm. uh, what's already there. And, and it could be soft on soft and it's still just not quite Right, so I have to do it in layers, really, because if I go try to go too light too fast and the and the stick isn't strong enough or I have I don't have enough tooth, mm -hmm. then it's going to look yeah, and really dull. like it doesn't have any life to it. Totally not the color I would think to grab, but it works nicely with what's underneath and it's helping me blend a little bit. A little peachy orange, which is kind of nice. And then I can take some of that 
beigey yellow. We'll go right up next to it. Too yellowy, tone that down. Did just grab a green on purpose. So that happens and I try to make nice loose markings so I'm not like really overly tight and drawing lines that I go crooked and then everything's ruined. <laughs> I'll fix it. I'll fix it. Too bad. They're still in. My loose markings get myself in trouble. <laughs> we'll be right there. I always love it when people say, I can't even draw a straight line. I'm like, well, neither can I. So, <laughs> paint me, paint me. I am not worried about straight lines, usually, until I'm doing this. And then I'm like, I grab myself the okay. I think all your angles are good. I think you got that. Yeah, so that one is kind of this one. Yeah. It's wider at the top. Okay. Um, we get a mess with like one other thing. 
this roof line here is I think it I think I know what it is I think it's like some kind of a retractable awning or something it looks like it comes out in a weird way like there's an arm to it but it's so bland hmm. or it's so like it was just such a dark mass I wanted to soften some of it yeah that looks funny think I would do good with a little bit. I could do this with a regular pencil. I've got the charcoal pencil in my hand, so that's what I'm using, but I could certainly do some of the hint of the variety of trim with a regular pencil. I don't want to make anything, any lines that are so specific that it's like oh that's wrong i just want little hints of it so that you get an idea of texture not necessarily an exact hard replica it is easy to get carried away with the start <laughs> I don't want to do that. I'm not even thinking about it. All right. Okay, so I'm looking at it on the screen. Yeah, this tree branch right here is really obnoxious on this <laughs> on the painting. So let me soften that up a little bit. That one branch needs other branches coming out of it. Not doing that. Let's see. This is that gray. Make it a little darker. I am re-emphasizing some of the darker branches in the middle because I put so many light ones in there, then they all kind of got muddied up. So I just kind of re-emphasize some of them while adding a little bit more there. I think I'm calling it a day. Like that light right there. All right, just that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, just bring it And I there. can't decide. It was just a couple weeks ago, so it's not like it's like spring trees. It's not like it's the cherry blossoms, but I don't know that it's. Was it so cold? Is it icy? Are they icy? No, it wasn't yeah. cold. I was actually, I actually took my jacket off because it was hot, mm. but. It might just be really light brick mm -hmm. with sunlight mm -hmm. on it because it is a brick building yeah, yeah. and maybe it's two tone because I think there's a wall mm -hmm. so it could be a wall and then the brick but that's the fun of photographs if you don't know you just kind of paint approximately what you see all right I'm going to stop the recording now because we are done with this um I'll take a formal picture of it when I post the video um, so you get a little cleaner shot of it and um, I'll splice all the videos together 
everyone. All right.